We're back with the breakfast. Uh, the federal government, through the National Human Rights Commission, has inaugurated a special investigative panel to probe alleged cases of human rights violation and counter insurgents in the Northeast. The special investigative panel, headed by a former justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Abdu Aboki, is saddled with a responsibility to investigate allegation of gross violation of national and international human rights laws. Principles alleged against the Nigerian armed forces in three reports by uh, Reuters. Now, Section 5, subsection, uh, you have A, B, J, and 6, subsection I, A of the NHRC Act of 2010. Now, apart from that, there's also a responsibility to receive memorandum from individuals and organizations with interest in the subject matter of mandate of the SIIP, not is, especially human rights, security, humanitarian organization working in the Northeast. It's also saddled with the responsibility, this panel, to make appropriate determination as to the culpability of individuals or institution as may be deemed necessary in each circumstance. When you look at uh, the various sections uh, following the act of the NHRC of 2010. It's also a uh, panel is added with our responsibilities to make determination as to the damages or compensation payable in relation to any violation of human rights where it deems it necessary in the circumstances of the cases uh, regarding making reference to the sections of the act. Now, Another responsibility is that it would refer any matter of human rights and violation requiring prosecution to the Attorney General of the Federation of the State, as the case may be, in tandem with the Acts of 2010 and HRC. We have Jeffrey Walema who joins us this morning. He's a legal practitioner right here in Lagos. Jeffrey, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. And how are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Good morning. All right, then. It's, it's good to have you join us. Jeffrey, quickly, can you share your thoughts with us as to this development by the federal government establishing this panel of inquiry for this purpose? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, it is not out of place that uh, the federal government has come to the rescue of the people. So... Um, I think this is um, a long overdue uh, process, something that should have been done ever since. But I mean, uh, it's better, it's better, <laughs> it's better late than never. So um, I appreciate the fact that the government has come to the rescue of the people and you know to attend to the people's rights. You know, because um, anybody um, who must have been like in the law. Uh, once there is a wrong, there is a right. So if there is a wrong, no matter who it is, even though it's the highest power in the community, in the society, in the federation, um, there should be a remedy for the person who has been uh, wrongfully um, you know, affected. Yes. So um, I think this is a very good call. And um, I think the fundamental human right is um, also a very important part of the society. Um, if the people's fundamental human rights is neglected, I mean, there's going to be a pushback and uproar, and you see that the, um, even the bourgeoisie, the proletariat, everybody, nobody is going to enjoy the society eventually, and there will be a breakdown of law and order. So it's, it's a very good call. But, but don't you think that this might just be a duplication of... Uh laws and not necessarily law i mean this a panel don't we have laws already that should guard against the violation of human rights in our constitution okay so um just like in uh, in lagos um, when um when there was a uh, shooting which uh, there was a panel set up you know to address the situation this is just the same situation here um so um, the military is a peculiar organization in society because of the nature of their job and um, everything surrounding um, the peculiarity of the military. 
uh, it's always very important to handle the situation with its own peculiarity. So that is why you see people, that's why you see that anytime there is uh, an uproar, anytime there is anything against the military, you notice that um, the society, there is always going to be a panel set up, a different panel set up by the, uh, by the government of the day to address the issue at its own um, peculiarity. So um, it is not a duplication per se, it is just a, a, a means to get to an end. And, and you also agree with me that um, if, you, if, you take, if you take a peculiar matter like this to the courts uh, and follow the true process of courts, um, it, could delay, it could delay the process. And because the people too in the society, in that particular age of the society, may not have so much access to justice. So with this, it gives them access to the location. I'm, I'm very sure it's going to be very close to them. Um, it also gives give the people who understand the community very well opportunity to adjudicate. Like um, the justice said, he said that um, everybody will be listening to, both the military, both the council, both the people, everybody will be, at, everybody will be listening to. And I, I really don't think it's a duplication. I think um, it's a good procedure and it will, it will give justice. And you no know, justice delayed is already justice denied. So, I mean, this is a good process, yeah. You know, you, you also, I mean, if you remember vividly, there was a report that was being made, and in this report it was alleged that the Nigerian army had been running a secret abortion program for rescued women and girls, for <laughs> which about 10,000 of pregnancies have been aborted, and that was since 2013. But, you know, the military had denied the report. So... With this panel, do you th do you think that justice will be served, or do you see any tangible results, or uh, you know some sort of uh, hope in all of this? Because I mean, if you commit a crime, it's just not natural that you are accepted if you're confronted with it. That's what it is. So, do you see this uh, panel bringing hope? Is there going to be justice? What do we make of the fact that the military is also in denial of several allegations that have been put out with evidence? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said before, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a panel that will listen to everyone. Yeah, that's right. And also, um, the allegations against the military, um, like every other person, the military is like every other body. Um, at first accusation, everybody was denied and uh, upon evidence and proper evidence and um, adjudication and everything, uh, you'll be able to find out who did what, what happened and uh, a clear process of what really happened. So in this circumstance, I wouldn't say um, uh, in, strict, in strict sense or like I'm sure that the military has done anything or uh, the military has committed these offenses. But we all know that it may not be far from the truth. Once there is, uh, once there is smoke, there must have a fire somewhere. <laughs> so, so I'm not, um, I'm not going to be surprised that um, something has happened. But you, you can see there could be inflation of numbers. There could be, uh, you know, inflation of details. You know, hearsay evidences and all that. So, I mean, at the point where we have everybody come to speak for themselves, come to. Uh, come to them and discuss exactly what they think that happened. I mean, at that point, we'll be able to know exactly. Um, I, I believe and I trust the fact that uh, the Supreme Court judge will do justice to this situation. So I also I also appreciate the fact that um, uh, the federal government understands this part too and not just dismiss the fact that they said or the hearsay or whatever. So I, I appreciate the process and I, I, am, I am very glad this kind of thing is happening. So, but um, like you also know, um, just like the panel in Lagos, we don't want such a situation where uh, the panel will give um, a judgment, nobody is following the process or uh, the panel will, will not be able to say exactly what they want. But I mean, as long as there is justice and proper dispensation uh, uh, of justice. I believe the people will gain, get justice. I know that definitely there is no way you can compensate the person for some wrongs. 
right? But um, I mean, at least something that should the heart is okay. And I mean, then, I mean, if you if, if you if you juxtapose uh, panels, because like you have said, it's very commendable. But you know, we live in yeah. a climate where Nigerians have lost trust. There's a trust deficit with those who are calling the short and those who are, you know, taking the orders. So the ruled and the, uh, you know, the other class of people. There's a trust deficit. Now, vividly, you we making reference to the ENSAS panel, and you want to juxtapose it with this panel that's been put out. Are there prospects? Is there any hope for justice for these victims? Well, um, just like every regular Nigerian, you know, every other person in, 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 uh, where we are, we are hoping for justice, yes, and um, I wouldn't say there is not going to be justice. I, I believe that there's going to be justice. I mean, I'm not part of the panel, uh, but I saw a, I saw a list of people in the panel, and I mean, I believe there's going to be justice. But um, we know that uh, because probably we've lost trust in the system, a lot of people have lost trust in the um, judicial system here. Um, it's going to be a bit, um, you know, you know, it's going to be a bit hard for people to come to them that oh, this has happened, and they believe that the people have been just. It's even if, as I'm speaking to you, someone the the panel were able to find out that it's only um, um, hundred people that actually had abortion. Um, I don't think Nigerians will also believe. I think I think the first thing for us to do is to also give this panel, give um, give the justice system opportunity sometimes to um, to to come up with uh, you know to come up with a decision. I, I know I know there are there have been situations so, so where it's okay for the decision. So if, if we say that uh, if you say that you are hopeful, I don't know how many Nigerians are very hopeful. And uh, mm -hmm. those who are victims, uh, of course, in, in the course of all of this, uh, yeah. if, you know, there's any hope for that. Because it's okay to have a panel, constitute a panel. It's okay for the panel yeah. to be thorough in her investigation. It's also mm -hmm. expected that the panel would come up with, you know, reports and uh, proposal and what have you. There's also a need to implement yeah. it. Uh, so at the end of the day, there's always this saying that you can't be a judge in your own case. And that's something that you are conversant with as a legal practitioner. So what exactly yeah. is, you know, the level of thrust, trust, I beg your pardon, that um, there will be justice served despite the outcome. Let's even say that we trust the panel to be able to be thorough in their investigation. But what, what, what exactly? Because this panel, I'm not the one who set up the panel. Mm -hmm. So those who are, you know, involved in the business of governance are still the ones who have set up this panel. And the people mm -hmm. uh, who have been accused of this crime are also still mm -hmm. part of the same system. So where exactly is the hope for justice and thoroughness? Okay. All right. Um, we all know that the... The arms of government is divided into three, right? And um, the, the, the judiciary is different from the executive, and the military is inside the um, executive, right? Um, they, fall, they fall under the executive. Um, you also get the people. The people are not under the um, judiciary. So what I'm trying to say is this. You cannot be a judge over your own matter in the sense that a judge is he's a trained, you know, a trained and he has been trained in in, in in the Nigerian law school. He has been a judge for years for him to be a Supreme Court justice. And not only that, um, this is a different body from every other part of the of the government. So so um, it's going to be um, it's going to be a, a just one. I believe the, 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 there's no duplication of offices at least that the offices are not together. And I also believe that this is a different office from um, 
from the office of the military. Military is a different office on its own. The people is a different office. So definitely, it is not um, being a judge over your own matter. It is a different body adjudicating, a trained body adjudicating over the matter of the society. I, I don't know if that answers your, your question. Jeff and Walima, we have to go now. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We do appreciate your time and your thoughts. Uh, do Thank have you a great day. Much. All right, then. Uh, Jeffrey Mwalema is a legal practitioner right here in Lagos. He joined the conversation. And uh, we have been looking at, you know, the prospect of justice and hope for those who have actually uh, been, you know, violated. I mean, their rights have been trampled upon and uh, quite commendable to say that the government has thought it wise to establish a panel, you know, of investigation. Uh, to all of those crimes or whatever it is, however you want to put it. But that's the much we can take right now. And we hope you had a great time uh, following the show from 7 o'clock up until this moment. We'll definitely return tomorrow with more exciting lineup. And we look forward to having you being part of the conversation. You can also follow it if you missed out on any part of it uh, via social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bokpo. Do have a great morning. We'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us.